Good evening. Thank you. And welcome, all of you. Welcome to this webinar, Meto, Meto Snows. I want to thank Pestle Instrument for choosing l'informatore agrario as a partner for this event. I introduce myself. I am Antonio Boschetti, the director of l'informatore agrario, a magazine that since uh, 1945 has been at the side of the farmers trying to analyze the best possible techniques for farming and the most recent uh, scientific developments that might enable us to uh, improve uh, the farming activity. Tonight, we have uh, three important experts uh, in uh, uh, vine culture in Italy, a challenging title. Pessel Instrument has decided to uh, title how to produce a 30 euro bottle of wine through water management, irrigation management, a challenging title, extremely topical. Climate change is changing the way in which we grow vines. We'll continue to change it in the future. Recently, I took part in an event where it was highlighted that the increase in the average temperature can cause a water need for the plants that is uh, more uh, important than it was in the past, and therefore the need to be extremely effective in managing irrigation. As we say in the title, irrigation management, we have to manage irrigation. It is a problem we have discussed a lot in, uh, 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 in an area like Trentino, a northeastern uh, part uh, uh, of Italy. Some studies have shown that the uh, yield uh, of uh, grapes has been anticipated by almost one month uh, if compared with 30 years ago. And this can clearly uh, explain how important climate change can be. Climate change and uh, water uh, supply needs uh, are extremely important and if not correctly managed, can have important uh, effects on the quality of grapes, uh, the content in sugar, uh, phenols, and tocians, uh, and the most important components uh, in grapes. And this has to be uh, managed if we want to have a quality wine. As you know, Italy has a strong vocation to uh, vine growing, uh, wine produce production. We produce wines that are known all over the world. And the problem of acidity uh, in wines is uh, extremely important for us and for the final product and for the market. Just think of Prosecco, how important it is to regulate the water content in the soil so as to obtain wines, masts rather, that can then uh, be turned into uh, Prosecco. It is not just a problem of sparkling wines. Uh, the quality of wine is fundamental for Italian vine growers. Our reference market is Italy. And high quality can be obtained only by managing irrigation because the water stress can impact the most important components 
of wine. It can impact the possibility of refining wines, aging wines, more or less, and many other aspects. In order to manage irrigation, the water level in the terroir, first of all, you have first of all to measure and to know the situation uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of the crops during the different seasons, and therefore we need measurement uh, tools uh, to measure humidity, gas exchanges, up to satellite tools. This evening we shall try and uh, uh, understand, starting from the tools we have uh, to uh, be aware of the water situation in uh, the soil through an understanding of the effects of uh, water stress on the quality of acids to finally be able to manage irrigation in the most effective way. So I pass the floor at once to Alessia Cugato who teaches agriculture at the Charletti Institute in Conegliano, as Alessia will explain to us what are the tools we can use to get to know the uh, water situation of, of the crop. Alessia, you have the floor. Sorry, I pressed the wrong button. While opening my presentation that I hope you can see, can you see my presentation? No, not yet. It is shared. Now, yes, now. Okay. Okay, here it is. First of all, I want to thank Pestle Instruments and the Informatore Agrario to invite me to this webinar with my presentation on as Mr. Boschetti has anticipated, on the different methods we have, innovative methods, thanks to new technologies, to, uh, to recognize the water condition of uh, the crop. I also teach at Padua University, and uh, there I present some tests about our spectral response studies in uh, vines. As it was already said before, clearly water stress is linked to climate change, which is uh, something uh, we have evidence of. You see this in the graph. Temperatures are growing according to five research institutes that have worked independently, but have managed to verify that as against the thermal average of the period between 1951 and 1980, an increase which is plus 1.5 percent, whereas this is the objective we should maintain up to the end of the century. Climate change does not only mean global warming, but also a series of unforeseeable uh, and uh, uh, extreme climate events. And this requires new technologies. We need to find uh, faster methods to respond 
promptly to an event that was perhaps un unforeseen, uh, heat waves, a frost, uh, heat, uh, um, dra uh, drought. Let us focus on uh, water stress, so the consequences on vines. As Mr. Boschetti said, there can be positive effects if we have a moderate water stress because there is accumulation of substances that can give more quality to some types of wines. But there are also consequences that can cause difficulties to the farmers, in particular, the closing down of stomatas and the reduction of photosynthesis for those species that have an isohydric behavior that close their stomata to preserve the water content of the plant. As a consequence of a reduced photosynthesis, we have a reduction in the yield of the crop. And this is a serious problem uh, vine growers should face. Moreover, important stress, uh, water stresses can cause gas bubbles within the uh, tissues of the, the plant. And so the normal flow of the fluids within uh, the vines are compromised. There are tools we can use to verify the uh, water stress that have some uh, uh, pros and cons, which is why we are researching the spectral response to uh, water stress in the vines. The first tool is the visual analysis uh, a vine grower, an expert wine grow, vine grower, can certainly see whether the vine is well or not, uh, evaluating leaves, whether they are folded downwards. But I think we all agree that it is rather subjective uh, method based on experience, which doesn't allow us to see what is happening inside the plant. And then there are other uh, tools that can be used, they are used in research, with their precision, with their efficiency, they are not so easy to be used when we have 35, 38 degrees on the field. The pressure chamber that uh, measures the uh, leaf water potential uh, in the plants. Uh, it requires a long presence of the farmer on the field and requires a number of tests. And then we can analyze the infrared gas uh, measurer, gas meters, that uh, measure the gas exchanges in the leaves, inputs and outputs, uh, CO2 and water in particular, photosynthesis and uh, perspiration. These tools, again, are heavy and require a capacity to calibrate them and to use them, which is not so uh, easy, and they are quite expensive. Recently, we have good results by uh, using thermal uh, cameras that can be used in the vineyard and that can also be mounted on a drone. In this case, the thermal response of the plant can provide indications uh, about its stress conditions. If it is not mounted on a drone, it is not uh, a, a tool that can uh, analyze large areas of uh, uh, soils, uh, and we are referring, we are talking about heat waves and uh, uh, frosting that can involve large areas. Uh, this is uh, to show you what are the tools I've mentioned. 
they are not so easy to use as you can see in uh, extreme climate conditions. So with my group, we have tried to assess the use of spectral sensors, spectral probes that can evaluate the features of a target, in this case plants, but it might be any other target. Depending on the radiation, this target reflects or emits in the different uh, wavelengths of the magnetic spectrum. These sensors can give back for each wave band an image if they are imaging sensors or a measurement that is different. So we can obtain the reflectance in each individual band. By combining the different reflectances, we can calculate vegetation indexes that allow us to map an area with a clear uh, uh, vegetation uh, index. Why do we get indications about vegetation? Because for many years we know the uh, spectral signature of the vegetation, how vegetation emits and reflects light, the different uh, wavelengths, according to its health. This is the uh, spectral uh, signature of a healthy vegetation in green. In red, there is unhealthy vegetation. We can see that healthy vegetation has a higher reflectance in the area of the near infrared, whereas unhealthy vegetation or stressed vegetation has a slightly higher reflectance in the visible, much lower in the near infrared. And this is a summary of what I've just said. Depending on how much light is reflected in its different wavelengths, we can assess the state of well being or illness of a plant. We can cross the different reflectances. Uh, we all know NDVI as an index. It refers to reflectance in the near infrared and in the red to give with high values an indication of healthy vegetation. With lower values, we have uh, uh, indications that the plant is stressed. The stress can be biotic, abiotic, uh, due to uh, irrigation, for example. In a couple of case studies, uh, they have tried to understand what are the most suited uh, wave uh, lengths uh, uh, to uh, uh, identify a water stress in plants. The first case study was made resorting to satellite images, the images of uh, Sentinel-2, the European Space uh, uh, Agency. They are free images. In the Italian territory, where farms are quite small, the fact that this tool is free uh, you can download images for free, is uh, a great advantage. But I think that also for other areas where there are much larger farms, this might be an advantage in any case, because you have the possibility of analyzing with free images large areas of territory. These images uh, provide th 13 bands between the visible and the near infrared. They have a, a revisitation time of five days. During winter, these labs can uh, uh, change. Uh, the image might not be available because of clouds. 
But normally in summer, we know that we have the possibility of having an image every five days. The problem connected with these images is that the resolution is lower, 10 meters. 60 meters is a, a wave band that does not interest us. You see here, this is uh, a piece of an image of Sentinel-2. In the lower part of the screen, you see uh, um, uh, the image from a satellite that you have to pay for. Uh, the lower image is much clearer. So if we analyze the reflectance of Sentinel, we know that we have mixed pixels. This experiment was done with the heat waves uh, with a persistence of at least three days with temperatures higher than 40 degrees Celsius, there were eight heat waves. So we made this survey resorting to this medium resolution images. But we tried to understand whether the fact that the pixel is not is mixed is not so clear, uh, could uh, uh, is a solvable problem. So we have uh, chosen a, a worldview image with a very high resolution 0.5 meters we could see the interlinear uh, uh, distance. Uh, we have uh, calculated the NDVI of, uh, of the lines. Uh, we have resampled it with a distance of 10 meters and compared it with the image of Sentinel-2 that has uh, 10 meters of mixed pixels. In some part of the image, you can see that there is a good respondent we have a 65% respondents, uh, correspondence in the images. It is not ideal, but for free, we can analyze a situation of stress and following recovery of large areas without having to pay a lot. And DVI is just one of the numerous indexes we can select it is not ideal for water stress because from this study we have seen there is the SAVI index, soil adjusted index that can reduce the influence in the interlinear distance. This is the situation before the heat wave. This is the situation immediately after uh, the stress. And this is the situation 10 days after the heat wave with very good thermal uh, conditions with uh, a water stress in the central image. If we a couple green with a positive situation and red to a negative situation, you can see that with the exception of these areas, the satellite image has perfectly uh, recorded the well-being situation before and the stress situation in the central uh, moment. This is a visual uh, investigation, a visual analysis of the situation before stress the situation one week after the heat wave, the plants look almost the same. There are some dry leaves, but visually plants are well. They have recovered quite well. They have gone back to initial conditions. Is it really true from a physiological point of view? The situation is quite different. These are surveys made with the classical tools we have seen before. And they tell us that the plants, the vines, have recovered their photosynthetic capacity before the stress, so two days after the stress, and 10 days after the stress, they are almost in the same condition, but they have not recovered their capacity, their uh, water, leaf water potential, 
and uh, the capacity to exchange gases. Multispectral indexes managed to uh, read this uh, suffering of the plants. VARI, that is an index that provides us indications on the green uh, production. We see uh, that SRI, that is an index that gives us physiological data about uh, the plant has not recovered after the stress. So the multispectral image managed to read uh, beyond the visual analysis without resorting to uh, complicated tools. A second study was done instead with an hyperspectral tool, a portable hyperspectral tool. The satellite or the drone can be very useful, but remote sensing, remote analysis can be very useful in extreme conditions. So this study somehow uh, is useful uh, to study. Uh, it does not exceed the efficiency of traditional tools. In this case, we have compared two uh, situations in irrigation with an heat wave, so standard irrigation and uh, a deficit irrigation situation. And we have measured the physiological parameters with the usual tools and the hyperspectral response with a portable spectrophotometer. And we have calculated the vegetation indexes. In green, you see the standard irrigation. In violet, sustained deficit irrigation. So a deficit condition. A leaf water potential, conductance, and photosynthesis. You see that in green, we have standard irrigation except for uh, stomatic conductance, there has been no impact on other physiological parameters. So good irrigation can, uh, can face uh, 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 a stress condition. In the case of a deficit uh, irrigation system, the different parameters have been heavily impacted even after the heat wave. So without the adequate irrigation level, the uh, negative effect will continue in time. Again, hyperspectral indexes helped us to uh, see something more uh, than uh, through uh, normal monitoring in the treatment with the deficit irrigation, the different indexes that provide us with information on uh, vegetation and DGI, for example, recorded a worsening after the stress, but more or less came back to the initial stage as in the other experiment. Vegetation recovered, but other indexes measuring the physiological function like SRI show us that there is no recovery after 10 days. So the spectral analysis allow us to go beyond a visual investigation, putting together the visual survey with the different tools uh, to uh, measure the physiological uh, conditions. With the tests I've shown, we can certainly say that multi and hyperspectral data can provide us with information on the physiology of stressed vines, satellite images with uh, uh, an intermediate resolution that are available for free can be used on medium large areas, small areas uh, uh, are not so suited for this type of analysis. 
y remote sensing the use of remote sensing allow us to avoid uh, difficult uh, surveys on the field if we are uh, if we desire to avoid them because of uh, uh, heat or uh, difficult conditions and the possibility to work with uh, remote sensing can uh, uh, allow us to develop uh, 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 general strategies to prevent a stress and not only reacting to stress but preventing uh, problems for uh, our vines thank you all for listening and i leave you to the following speakers that will discuss irrigation in depth if you have questions i hope we will have uh, some time at the end thank you thank you alessia you have clearly shown that the visual uh, investigation is not sufficient modern agriculture needs a, a technological support much more than it was sufficient a few decades ago. We have seen that heat waves without clear uh, phenological changes in the grapes can heavily impact instead the physiological indexes with Giovanni Bigot, uh, uh, founder of uh, uh, Le Uve SRL, we shall try and understand what changes can be caused by a water stress, referring to the most important components, acid components uh, in uh, grapes. Water stress can heavily impact the variability of uh, uh, berry compositions, even more than variations in the quality of the soil. Good afternoon. I hope you can see me quite well. I've just come home from uh, my vineyard. I should be uh, allowed to share my screen. See, with your presentation, you will tell us about some specific uh, quality, some specific varieties of uh, uh, grapes to understand the uh, composition of uh, grapes. Uh, depending on water stress. Io faccio condivisione, ma non è attivo. Nezza, you should perhaps, Nezza, you should perhaps habilitate him. Diamo qualche secondo, Giovanni, alla regia per... Sì. Ecco, adesso... Perfetto, grazie. Prova. Uh, L'ospite, uh, no, uh, non, non lo so, non mi vedo. Ah, era comparsa la scritta. Allora, purtroppo ho, ho due device e quindi uh, ho bisogno di essere abilitato sull'altro device per la condivisione. Prova adesso eh. Giovanni, che ho provato anch'io a... Ah, ok, perfetto, perfetto, grazie. Ok, now it works. Here I am. I can see my presentation, I can start. Good evening. I want to thank l'informatore agrario 
for organizing this meeting and Pessel Instruments, uh, uh, Gottfried in particular, for making the discussion possible about the management of uh, water uh, conditions in vineyards. I am an agronomist. <coughs> I try and uh, grow uh, and produce great wines. I work in this sector. When I am in my vineyards, I normally monitor what happens. As I have been doing this for a long time, I found that there are parameters that can better describe the potential of a vineyard. These parameters are yield, exposed leaf surface, the health of grapes, the type of bunch, and the water condition of the plant, also vegetation vigor, biodiversity, and the age of the vineyard. These nine uh, parameters are part of the bigot index, my index, but I will tell you uh, about what I found and the strong relation between quality and water management. Uh, light uh, stress, uh, water stress is fundamental for the quality. I was lucky enough to be involved in the management of many vineyards in Italy, uh, France uh, and other countries, where the natural uh, mixture of soil the type of soil, the depth of the roots and of the water regime can determine a natural factor that allows the vine to grow with a limited quantity of water during a certain stage of uh, its growth, in particular during the formation of the berry. So it is a great tool to regulate quality of uh, uh, grapes and therefore of wines. Why is it important to manage water in a vineyard? Many scientific uh, experiences I will tell you about and practical experience as well. I have seen with my working group tell us that a limitation in the water uh, availability during uh, water formation, uh, during berry formation, can improve the quality of the grape. So you modify the parameters of, uh, of, of grape and the organolectic qualities. In some areas, this happens naturally, and these are the most evocated terroirs. We are aware of this. But we are also aware that climate change can impact a uh, balanced situation and therefore uh, 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 management is required. Some works have been done. You see here two levels of stress, uh, sugars, uh, the pH in mast, uh, anthocyanins and polyphenols. Uh, polyphenols, uh, the structure of a wine, its color, its tannic con content is modified by different levels of stress. On black wine, on Pinot uh, Noir, uh, a study has been uh, conducted. As you can see from the broken lines in these small boxes that show you the trend of the leaf water potential, the water content in the leaves before dawn, pre-dawn water content, uh, evaluating how much water is present in a vine at a certain time of the day. You see that anthocyanins mod are modified and increase in with a light stress if compared with uh, large water availability, they modify polyphenols and the quality of tannins and the bouquet of the wine changes. 
Uh, and this can be applied to different uh, type of wines. And each vine responds differently to these variations. We should always be able to follow each type of uh, uh, vine uh, and each different uh, terroir. The effects of excess water, excess water availability. We have uh, evidence that uh, a vegetation growth with uh, abundant water favors large berries, diluted, compact bunches that are very sensitive to uh, diseases, uh, to rottening, and a low quality of uh, uh, grapes. Differently, an excessive water stress, the opposite condition, can alter the regular growth of the vine that is delayed and cannot uh, and might not come to completion. So in order to have a good quality wine, you need some stress, not an excessive stress, not to make uh, uh, the growth uh, difficult, impacting vegetation. Uh, be careful with the too early water stress. Water uh, abundance, uh, Remarkable water differences, water uh, supply differences can uh, damage the development of the vegetation and of the berry. And I cannot get the optimum ratio between vegetation and grapes. If the water stress is excessive and happens at mid season after very zone after fruit uh, fruit set uh, we might have problem in maturation and we might have an increase in bricks sugars that are a scarce indicators of quality because uh, grapes seem to be maturing but it is just a migration of the uh, carbohydrates reserves of the vine uh, there it is not the result of photosynthesis Many aromas develop in the last weeks of growth, but uh, late stress can limit their development. Therefore, a high level of stress tends to produce uh, low fruity uh, uh, wines with very little aromas and with a very short life. A typical aging seems to be due, seems to be due, to a stress syndrome in which water is the key element, together with the availability of nitrogen. Water stress and terroir, something we have seen in Cheval Blanc in Bordeaux and in other places, areas that, are, uh, that have a soil with gravel uh, very well dredged, allow the roots uh, that intercept water reserves uh, without stimulating an excessive vegetation in vines can bring us to the uh, best possible mixture of conditions. So we have a vegetation uh, that is uh, in perfect balance with, uh, uh, with the fruit production. I can also reduce uh, the size of the berries by uh, acting on water stress. And when I say water stress, I intend to use a mixture uh, of a coating crop in a different way to limit the height of a crop, 30 centimeters of uh, grassing can can contain, can lead to four or five uh, uh, milliliters of water lost per day. So we can manage the water shortage, the water uh, supply. If I intervene in an early stage, I can have 
different uh, punches if i if i enact an excessive stress water stress i reduce the size of the berry too much and this reduction can reach 50% of the quant of the quantity of of, of uh, grape produced let us uh, uh, see a study uh, performed in Italy by Pagliotti and Poni on Sangiovese and Monte Pulciano in well irrigated soils and in conditions of very strong stress before fruit set, before Verazon. We can have uh, different reactions in the two types of uh, grapes. These two uh, vines have a totally different behaviors uh, with water. They manage water uh, differently. And you can clearly see that one uh, vine reacts positively, the other instead has a very negative reaction to water stress which means that if we go back to uh, uh, Sant'Emilion, you see that uh, the crew are characterized by water management much more than in other cases. How can we avoid uh, an atypical aging of the vines? I have to avoid a severe water stress. And then there are uh, studies about Sauvignon Blanc that with the moderate uh, uh, water stress, a little after the raison, with the stem water potential lower than 0.65%, can allow me to increase uh, the uh, uh, three times the concentration of the precursor of 3MH in uh, uh, mast. And this is obtained with a slight uh, water stress. I can triple the uh, aroma potential, one of the most uh, important uh, elements. A final review, uh, considering many works done uh, for each type of vine, you can see that for each vine, the results are different. Polyphenols, anthocyanins, Cabernet is behaving differently. You see Sauvignon Blanc, you can see it here. So we have behaviors that are different and that depend on the type of vine. We cannot ignore this, we cannot neglect this. I will conclude by saying that putting together the studies I have considered and uh, uh, the reactions we have uh, collected, I have been able to present this connection that says that severe water stress that we see in this first uh, set of uh, uh, numbers, you have uh, uh, a lot of uh, alcohol, uh, less green and pyrazine, uh, a totally uh, absent water stress, uh, as means more green, more pyrazine, shorter wines, less polyphenols, total polyphenols in the uh, in the uh, uh, condition in, in, in the middle, you see uh, the best possible balance. We can do the same with the Four Grapes app that allows you to measure the different parameters, including the water stress. We can measure uh, the leaf water potential. If you want to follow me, I have a YouTube channel uh, if you want, uh, we uh, talk about this every uh, morning. I pass the floor back to Mr. Boschetti. 
Thank you, Giovanni. A very interesting presentation. Perfectly on time. Your final slide perfectly uh, shows uh, the need for uh, a, a, a vine grower to maintain the balance, to be in the middle, not too much alcohol, but not too little. Uh, we want a wine we can sell at 30 euros a bottle, but we need tools in order to reach this balance. I now pass the floor to Roberto Melillo, project manager of Blue Grape, an app that, as the title says, makes your life and your vine easier easier. It helps us to stay in the middle, to manage water stress, uh, uh, reaching the perfect balance. I start with my presentation. Ottimo, abbiamo imparato e velocizzato questa fase. Ok, perfetto. Buonasera. Perfect. Perfect. Good evening, everybody. I'm Roberto Melilla. I'm the technical uh, uh, manager of Blue Grape. We manage this, I manage this uh, app uh, by, uh, thanks to Grape, uh, a consultancy uh, company. We are aware that uh, one producers have to overcome the idea that irrigation is not essential for producing quality wines. For some years now with Graper, my company, we have the mission, uh, we have a mission that is integrating uh, modern knowledge and modern technologies in a quality uh, vine growing based on the use of irrigation managed in a sustainable and careful way. And this is because we are convinced that the different businesses, those who uh, lay down the rules, will have to follow uh, our uh, path And this is clearly uh, evidence of the fact that you have to uh, be able to prevent. Uh, and uh, small businesses uh, ask for information on the possibilities to control irrigation and the tools to do so. A uh, serious uh, planning is necessary in order to obtain uh, satisfactory results. In order to do this, we can use Blue Grape, our DSS, for irrigation. DSS is a system to support decision making and interactive software, helping the user to collect and evaluate data and information. These data, these information, come from uh, hardware tools, as, uh, for example, uh, a pestle uh, meteorological station. Other information can come from personal experience, from consultancy. And all of this has the objective of analyzing the problems related to uh, an agricultural business supporting it in decision making. Blue Grape is a DSS focusing on irrigation management. Our objective is allowing the company 
to uh, have good results in production, in the yield, uh, better health for the plant, and the better management of the resources so as to uh, reach sustainability, environmentally uh, compatible results, and sustainable use of the resources. Entering into detail, we should plan our irrigation. The objective of a DSS like Blue Grape is defining uh, a, a program, an irrigation program for, uh, for the farm, for the company, understanding how much and when it is necessary to irrigate in order to uh, have a well-defined uh, uh, strategy. Planning can change depending on the cultivar, the enological objectives, the type of soil, and so on. There are many variables. The objective of this programming is avoiding stress conditions that have not been foreseen within our strategy. In order to do so, there are different approaches to evaluate the water conditions of the crop. It is possible to measure the water condition in the plants, as uh, Ms. Cogato was saying in her presentation, by means of different tools sensors or uh, tools that can be, however, difficult to use uh, on the field, especially for a farmer who has to uh, work his, uh, uh, his farm. It is possible to measure the water condition of the soil through tensiometers, capacity uh, probes, etc. The problem with this type of measurement is that it is too punctual. It has a limited validity. Ha una validità, diciamo, limitata a quei quel metro quadrato. It is limited to the square meter where the probe is installed. How does blue grape calculate the water condition of the soil? It uh, uh, analyzes the water balance uh, of the whole of the whole soil plant system. In order to do so, it is necessary to have a support system able to uh, process data in real time and to support decision making about how much and when uh, apply irrigation. Blue Grape supports the uh, irrigation planning of a company integrating uh, the decision-making process with uh, sensor uh, surveys. It calculates the need of water uh, through a, a daily water balance, estimating the most important outputs of water from the uh, soil plant system. Outputs are due to evaporation evapotranspiration, surface runoff, or deep percolation. Inputs of water in the system instead are due to rainfall, irrigation, or capillary water rising. This balance is done in order to avoid stress and to minimize uh, loss in the yield in production. Entering into detail, the components of this uh, water balance, the variables in this water balance are the following. In order to calculate the correct balance, we have uh, 
climate uh, elements are the climate factors that impact evapotranspiration. Another variable is the parameters referring to the development of the crop to uh, be able to assess the crop coefficient the properties of the soil and the uh, physical characteristics of the soil and finally the irrigation system characteristics because we have to uh, evaluate to, we, we need to have a correct figure about how much water we should input we should provide to that soil the evaluation of evapor of reference evapotranspiration we have to consider climate variables to calculate t with zero that is to say the water need that is calculated by consider the most uh, important feature in a grass reference crop, a standard reference crop. The value of ET0 is calculated on the daily values of heat, temperature, uh, solar irradiation, and uh, the rainfall meter the uh, wind speed i was saying we also measure rainfall that provides the input to the system we should always remember that these probes these sensors are not used to calculate the water balance but they just serve to assess the uh, uh, water consumption. How do we uh, reach the uh, evapotranspiration, cultural, uh, uh, the crop coefficient? We have to calculate this crop coefficient to better calculate the real consumption of water by the plants. KC, uh, the crop coefficient, requires to consider the index of crop vigor, the grass cover, the grassing or grass cover if present as a percentage of covering of the soil, and the presence and the type of cover on the plants. In this graph, you can see an estimate of this uh, of this uh, crop coefficient in FAO uh, data. We have uh, found some indexes that can apply to all varieties, to all species, and vary according to leaf density and to the uh, features and to the different variables we have listed before. You see here how evapotranspiration is represented on blue grape. It is expressed in millimeters per day. This is the fundamental figure in the software. 
telling you how much your plant is consuming every day. I see. Go on, Roberto. We will have questions at the end. As I was saying, this uh, orange uh, bar shows the fundamental figure, the estimate of uh, average daily need of water for each plant. And it tells you that it corresponds to an irrigation input from your uh, system and will suggest you how much water you should provide to your uh, uh, crop in order to maintain a, a situation of uh, well-being. Other important values are uh, other important values are determined by uh, natural naturally high ET zero or uh, a very large uh, leaf uh, surface. Referring to other variables, we have uh, the physical properties of the soil, the texture, the uh, uh, organic substance, the skeleton, and the maximum depth of the roots. These are the most important variables in order to evaluate the hydrological properties of uh, the soil, saturation, field capacity, drying point, uh, and total water capacity. Through these values, we can calculate the total water capacity of that soil, so how much water the soil can store as a water reserve. And this is a fundamental uh, information in order to balance inputs and outputs of water for that soil so as to get to uh, a, an optimum water balance. In this graph, you see water water use, so that is the very, the very heart of blue grape, it can estimate the total available water and uh, water that is easily available, expressed in millimeters. The pink line shows you water exhaustion uh, in the soil. that is calculated considering inputs and outputs of water. The level of water exhaustion is indicated by a percentage of water in the soil, the indicator you see on the left. In this case, it is 69%. These graphs show how to interpret uh, the graphs of the soil sensor. If there is a trend, if it, there is a downward trend, it means that we are in a situation of water deficit. If the graph is, uh, if the trend is upward, so we have an excess uh, su supply of water. If, uh, if we have an horizontal line, we have an adequate water supply for that uh, soil. The characteristics of the water system, of the irrigation system, are fundamental to uh, provide a correct suggestion about irrigation on the basis of the available uh, data. depending on the different types of irrigation system, we can have a different efficiency uh, for the plant. 
uh, uh, this uh, image explains how the software works. For different uh, types of soil, we can see these uh, squares as different vineyards with different soils. Clearly, these are just examples with different varieties of vines. We can use for blue grape one single meteor station with a range of approximately three, three and a half kilometers of range, depending on the place, and calculate ET with zero and uh, having the optimal water balance index for each one of these uh, uh, areas. It is advisable to have a different uh, uh, field stations so that the suggestion made by uh, the software can be as uh, efficient as possible. Uh, again, an example of how blue grape works. So you see the curve of water exhaustion, which is uh, which is close to saturation in the first stage, zero millimeters. It means that the soil is saturated with water. It doesn't need irrigation. In the green area, between uh, possible irrigation and water exhaustion is our irrigation strategy. So going back to what Giovanni was saying before, Giovanni Bigotto was saying before, he mentioned the importance of a control stress by means of a software like Blue Grape, we can balance our irrigation strategy in order to reach our objectives, both in terms of wine, in terms of vine growing, trying to keep water stress within a certain strategy, strategy predefined by our management. So when the plant when uh, water exhaustion goes beyond this green uh, uh, optimal area, we should irrigate and the software will suggest us the correct quantity of water to provide to that soil. And then um, we fall again into the green area. If we get out of the optimal area, again, the software will suggest us to provide water to the soil. So the suggestion is trying to stay inside the uh, irrigation strategy we have a predefined. Each irrigation strategy is uh, related to the objectives objectives we have for a sparkling wine, for example, the strategy will have to be different from the strategy you will adopt for uh, a primitive wine, a primitivo, which is uh, a, a wine from uh, the southern part of Italy, which has a different uh, water uh, stress requirement as against uh, uh, grapes for a sparkling wine. I was rather fast. I hope you really uh, uh, followed me in my uh, presentation. Another example on how uh, we can manage uh, irrigation. This is uh, 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 a business that had to irrigate uh, shortly every day to manage salinity and uh, the type of irrigation system they had. 
so they had to irrigate not daily but almost daily on a daily basis in this case they managed to remain within a predefined irrigation strategy they did not need to stress uh, the plant so they resorted to this type of approach i've uh, completed my presentation i want to thank godfried pessel for uh, Pessel for inviting us and the Informatore Agrario for having organized the event. If you have questions, I'm here to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Roberto. For Blue Grape, I invite our guests to ask questions considering that we have our experts with us. Roberto Melillo has shown us a tool, uh, Blue Grape, uh, uh, a tool to manage irrigation. I am convinced that that we will increasingly have to resort to these tools to manage the variables that can impact the quality of our grapes and water is one of these variables. I am asking the organizers to help me if there are questions I do not see. Uh, all the questions uh, that came on were already answered. So, but if anybody has another one, please. Don't be shy and ask away. <laughs> Just to start, I will ask a question to Roberto Bigot. Roberto, to Giovanni Bigot, in your experience in Italy, how much are vine growers aware that water management is fundamental for the quality of the grapes? And what is the uh, dissemination with the use of uh, uh, precision tools uh, in terms of irrigation. You have mixed my name and my son, the name of, uh, of Roberto Melillo and my surname. In my experience, uh, living uh, in close contact with vine growers in Italy, I am the son of uh, a family of vine growers if the perception of the need to manage water well uh, exists, we certainly lack uh, user-friendly tools, tools that are easy to understand and easy to use. Non tutti i viticoltori possono essere competenti in tutti i settori contemporaneamente. Not all uh, farmers can be competent in all the different sectors. They need somebody to teach them how to use the tools that are available, supporting them and accompanying them. This is the role for consultants, for agronomists, for the technicians to support, educate, train our farmers. It is your role as well as a director of l'informatore agrario of a magazine of a specialized magazine they should be more aware of how they can manage water supply and we should do this uh, in terms of training things are changing there are areas where uh, this is not yet uh, so deeply felt. Uh, 
Giovanni, I agree with you totally. In Italy, we have a problem of water supply that is connected to what you were saying, the fact that climate change is uh, requiring irrigation in areas where irrigation was not necessary before. I believe that, I believe that vine growing, quality vine growing, and I would ask uh, Roberto his opinion, quality vine growing will require irrigation both because of climate change but also because the continuous advances in technology and our knowledge of uh, the physiology of the vines and the continuous evolution of the quality of wines will force us to uh, refine our uh, uh, interventions in order to improve quality. So irrigation is necessary to face climate change, but also because our ability to improve the quality of wine uh, requires a precision uh, type of irrigation in our country. Can you say something on this, Giovanni and Roberto? Totalmente d'accordo su quanto hai detto. I totally eh, agree uh, with you. We have to be extremely precise because different uh, water inputs are different uh, are required for different types of vines, and it is difficult to manage differently uh, the different types of vines in the single uh, farm. We have to follow the vine type. Uh, Sauvignon has an optimum water requirement that is 0.65% uh, as a stem water potential. But with the tool we have seen uh, presented by Roberto Blue Grape, I should be able to apply this tool to a different uh, vine types uh, and for different wines. It will require uh, further uh, refinement, further time, and we must insist on this. Roberto, do you want to add something? As Giovanni was saying, it is important to to give our farmers a tool, but we need also more knowledge. So it is important to be able to plan. We have to improve our knowledge uh, of the management of the different varieties. If there is a need for a different type of water stress, it is important that the person who manages irrigation is aware of that different need. And it is necessary to be able to program not only irrigation, but the whole management of the company. A question for Giovanni, how does Four Grape support a rational management of irrigation? Please Giovanni, be as short as possible. For grapes is a tool uh, like a, a personal uh, agenda. You can write down all the information referring to your vineyard and on the water situation of your uh, crops. There is a faster, uh, a faster uh, route, the Apex Index. Uh, a system developed in France uh, that I have uh, uh, applied to four grapes, and then the leaf water potential. I use this, I put this data into my uh, uh, into my uh, uh, 
agenda into my agenda and I try and understand what I really need. It is not a tool that provides you with answers. It is a tool that makes you aware of what the situation is. I think we can cl close this meeting. I want to thank Pestle Instruments for organizing this event facing uh, an issue which is extremely a theme which is extremely topical and that will be increasingly uh, important not only for Italian agriculture but for agriculture in general uh, France and Spain are facing climate change as we are doing in uh, Italy there was a frost in uh, France we have seen I want to thank Pessel the future will force us to face uh, more and more complex uh, situations because of climate change, but also because of the different needs and requirements of our consumers, because of the changes in taste, success will be for those who will manage to manage this complexity. Also, thanks to highly technological tools, through uh, sensors and uh, through the knowledge of what is happening in our field. Again, thank to Pessel for uh, introducing us uh, in this uh, uh, path. I thank all the participants and uh, allow me to thank once again the speakers for their contributions. Have a nice evening.